Hey gang, it's JC and this is your Daily Dose for Friday, April 30th, 2010, a cooperative venture with Mind Active in beautiful downtown Brentwood, Missouri. Archives anytime at the top of the page, just hit the menu bar. And don't forget, we're expanding this website beginning Monday with two new features and we're going to talk about that here in just a minute. Let's start today with this Chelsea Handler story. I've never seen her show on E! I know she's the latest thing, sort of hot stuff in the late night uh, talk shows. That's all I know. And the other thing I know is that uh, yesterday some internet outfit stepped forward and said, hey, guess what? We got a sex tape on Chelsea Handler. Now, if you've seen this woman, you're thinking to yourself, sure, I'd like to see her naked. Why not? So that's the deal there. So the question is, is this for real or isn't it? She's 35 now. When she was 23, it turns out, she deliberately sort of made this produced comedy tape that was supposed to look like the real thing. But it turns out the whole thing was just a goof. By the same token, let me read from the release. It says, Chelsea, who is on all fours on a bed, is naked and at several times during the filming looks directly at the camera. And here's my favorite part. Her breasts are bare and swinging during the sex act. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, so which is it? Well, it turns out that sounds very graphic, but apparently not much is actually showing. It's one of those type of things. All I know is this internet company wanted a million bucks from her to keep from distributing this thing, and she said no, and she went on television and said, hey, look, I've been showing this at parties for the last 10 years, so go ahead and release it. I don't care. Great publicity for me. So all I know is I've never seen this woman's show before, but I may start watching very, very soon. In the meantime, Conan O'Brien goes on 60 Minutes on Sunday and sort of uh, takes a little shot at Jay Leno. Here's the quotes. He went and took that show back, and I think in a similar situation, if roles had been reversed, I wouldn't have done it. I would have done something else. I'd go someplace else. I mean, that's just me. So that's going to be Sunday night on 60 Minutes. Conan was not allowed to be on television at all until May 1st, according to the uh, separation agreement with NBC. This is going to air on May 2nd. This uh, <clears throat> 60 Minutes interview is longer than the amount of time he actually spent hosting The Tonight Show. Sandra Bullock's adoption story knocked a piece about Julia Roberts off the front page of People magazine. Julia feels kicked in the teeth. Well, I've seen those teeth and they look big enough to handle the impact. Ricky Martin, seen on a beach in Miami yesterday. It was his first public appearance since his shocking admission that he didn't know the rest of the world already knew he was gay. All right, let's move on to Charlie Crist, the governor of Florida, Republican. And he's uh, running for the U.S. Senate seat down there, and everybody hates him. He's getting all sorts of heat from his own party, the Republicans. He starts getting all a bunch of heat from the Democrats, and he says, okay, I'll fix your asses. I will run as an independent. So now there's going to be a three-way race for the U.S. Senate seat. It is the first three-way in Florida not involving Tiger Woods and two skanks. All right, Time Magazine has come out with its most influential people issue, and it's pretty depressing because on the list, Sarah Palin, Glenn Beck, Lady Gaga, Conan O'Brien, and Steve Jobs. Remind me not to get a subscription. All right, you know how I feel about The Andy Griffith Show. I think The Andy Griffith Show is great. I think it's funny. Love Barney Five. So do the U-Man. U-Man is Barney Five. So uh, the woman, the actress who played Thelma Lou, Barney's girlfriend, is an actress, by the way, uh, by the name of uh, Betty Lynn. She's 83 now. And she's been living in Southern California, in the Los Angeles area, sort of living off the residuals from The Andy Griffith Show for like the last 50 years. And so everything's going great, except that she gets robbed three times living in Los Angeles. So she says, I got this great idea. This would be a, a karma thing. I'm going to move to Mount Airy, North Carolina, which is the town that Mayberry was actually based on, on the old Andy Griffith show. I'll go back there and I'll live there. I'll be a star. It'll be a nice, uh, uh, safe, uh, uh, happy existence. What a great idea, right? So she's coming out of a supermarket the other day and she gets robbed. Sorry. <laughs> you thought the story was going to have a happy ending. Eh, see? Who are you dealing with here? Uh, yesterday, I mentioned the fact that Rush was a. Well, they were approached to play during the opening ceremonies of the Olympics up in Canada, and they said no because they didn't want to lip sync. And I congratulated them for that. But I also mentioned that they had been really mean to me once, and they got some email from people going, Well, don't do that. Tell us what happened. Well, it was Buffalo, and it was the spring of 1983, right before I moved to St. Louis. And uh, I'm supposed to come out there on stage and bring Rush out. You make a couple of announcements, you get the crowd sort of pumped up, and then you bring out the band. I've done it a million times. 
And so I'm standing there, but if you know anything about concerts, you know, right in front of everybody's microphone on stage, they have a, a little monitor. And the monitor is facing, it's a, you know, a speaker. So because otherwise you'd be playing and singing, and you'd be hearing the sound coming all throughout the arena, and you wouldn't be able to hear, so they put a little speaker right on the stage so you could sort of hear better. Well, that's, unfortunately for me, hooked up to the soundboard halfway back on the main floor. And while I'm out there trying to welcome the crowd, hello, Buffalo, how you doing tonight? These guys start giving me a hard time because, see, Rush has had sort of a very contentious relationship with the broadcasting industry for a long time. I think they didn't think they got a fair shake, particularly in the early days. They didn't get enough airplay, so they sort of have a hard-on for radio. So I'm standing out there trying to talk, and these guys are yelling at me from the soundboard. And of course, I'm the only ones that can hear this because I'm on stage by myself. Nobody else can hear it. I'm trying to talk, and these guys are riding me. Ah, it's part of the deal. I've been over it for a long time. All right, uh, we talked about this yesterday. I'm going to hit it again. Uh, Officer Matt Crosby of Rock Hill. Lord knows I've had my issues with the Rock Hill Police Department, but this is real life we're talking about here. Officer Crosby was shot and uh, uh, critically wounded. He's in a wheelchair now. And a bunch of people got together and said, let's try to do something for this guy. So a week from tonight, Saturday night, May 7th at CBC, 7.30 at night, we're going to do a uh, charity softball game. And like half the Blues team is going to be there. David Backus, Eric Brewer, Barrett Jackman, Cam Jansen, Eric Johnson, Alex Steen. Davis Payne's going to be there. Al McKinnis, the Hall of Famer. Bernie Federko, the Hall of Famer. John Davidson is going to be there. Jamal Mayers, Blake Dunlop. Keith Kachuk is going to play in this game. And then they got a bunch of brittle-boned media celebrities like uh, Martin Kilcoin from Fox 2 and Rennie Knott from Channel 5, Brian McKenna, Dan O'Neill from the Post-Dispatch, Andy Strickland from KFNS, Kevin Wheeler, Cam Wax, and yours truly... We're going to be out there, so come on out and laugh at us, watch us drop the ball and strike out and stuff like that, pull hamstrings. You'll have a great time. Ten bucks to get in. They have some VIP seats for $100. Again, this is Saturday night, May 7th, next Friday at CBC. You want information? Ticketmaster.com or 1-800-745-3000. Hope to see you out there. Monday, we start two new features. One is called JC's Wayback Machine. The other one is called JC's Video Village. Check back with us on Monday, and you'll see what we're talking about. J.C.'s eye candy today because of the Kentucky Derby. It's the honeymoon is over horse race with video and uncensored. Enjoy. In the meantime, that's J.C.'s Daily Dose for Friday, April 30th, 2010, a cooperative venture with Mind Active in beautiful downtown Brentwood. In the meantime, we've beaten this one to death. Have a good one. See you later. Bye.